and welcome to In the Kitchen with Mary Mack. Today was a beautiful sunshiny day in western Pennsylvania and I just happened to have some strawberries and I thought this would be a really good day to make a sort of strawberry shortcake-ish kind of thing. So that sounded like a good word. I like that <laughs> sort of strawberry shortcake-ish kind of thing. That's fabulous. It works. <laughs> the family was trout fishing. Today's the first day of trout, which, um, if you know anything about Western Pennsylvania, trout is the first day of trout is like a holiday. So everybody goes. I mean, everybody. And people have pancake breakfasts all over the place, and they go out and fish and whatnot. And um, usually it's about 40 degrees and raining. But today it was. In the 70s, it was, it was like 77. Oh, it was gorgeous. Not a cloud in the sky. And it is April 16th in Western Pennsylvania. So two days ago, for reference, it was like 40. Yes, <laughs> it goes up and down a lot here. It's always exciting. If you don't like the weather, just wait a few minutes. So I thought this would be a really nice thing to take out um, with everybody's trout fishing, a nice little dessert to take out. So I happened to have a couple quarts of strawberries and, uh, and I decided to make a cake. So what I'm going to do today is tell you how to do that because I know it's early in the year, but um, I guess sometimes we think strawberry shortcake is daunting um, because of the different things people like to use. For example, making a biscuit or making a shortcake or whatever. Uh, people might think it's a little bit more time consuming than what they want to do. Um, I'm not a fan of using an angel food cake for strawberry shortcake. I like, I like a nice... Uh, drier sort of a crumb cake to use. Some of the shortcakes that are like a biscuit sometimes can be too dry also. So what I did, I do a cake that is called a pumped up box cake. And basically what that is, is you use whatever type of box cake. Um, what I do is whatever is on sale. So it could be a Betty Crocker, Duncan Hines, whatever. And um, just get your regular box cake, and I use a yellow box cake for the for the uh, strawberry shortcake. But you can do this with any flavor of box cake, and it just gives you a. Uh, it's more like a bakery texture to your cake. What we're gonna do to this, and it's um, something that's it's easy enough to do to take something every day and make it a little bit special and if you're a little nervous about doing a scratch cake which some people are and especially like a scratch yellow cakes can be about as heavy as a brick they tend to be very dense and very heavy so um this is a nice thing to do with a yellow cake and it works great for strawberry shortcake absolutely fantastic and it's delicious and noticeably different than a normal box cake Tastes very homemade. So what you're going to do, this is really simple. When I tell you, you're going to say, wow, this is so amazingly simple. I can't believe it's this delicious. But it is. <laughs> I'm breaking myself up here. Um, on your usual cake mix, it'll tell you how much water to add, how much oil to add, vegetable oil, and how many eggs to use. Typically, for a yellow cake, it'll be uh, one cup of water three eggs and half a cup of vegetable oil. So what you're going to do is you're going to substitute milk for your water. The cake I made today, I used almond milk in, and it came out, it, it, uh, it was very good. It worked very well. I was impressed with it. Um, but I used milk as a substitute for the water. I used butter as a substitute for the vegetable oil, and I used unsalted butter today and you you just take your butter and you want to soften it to the point where it's almost liquid uh, where you can easily stir it up with a spoon you add one extra egg so if your recipe call if your box not your recipe your box calls for three eggs you use four eggs and then you add a teaspoon of vanilla now I don't use a mixer when I mix up any cake I prefer mixing by hand and I start off with a wooden spoon and mix it up until it's fairly well mixed up and then I switch to a um, whisk. Uh, I have the kind of whisk, I have like several kinds of whisks because I really love them and I almost always use um, hand mix everything. But I have a whisk that looks like a hot air balloon so if that little picture pops into your head that's what I use for mixing cakes. And I mix it until it's uh, most of the lumps are out of it 
and mix it fairly well and then uh, put it into the cake pan prepared like they tell you to on the box which is basically just using shortening to um, grease the pan and putting a little bit of flour coating in it and then bake it for the time recommended on the box. So really all you're doing is kind of like upgrading the ingredients <laughs> that you're supposed to add to your cake. You're, you're exchanging your water and you can use if you use uh, 1%, 2% milk, like I said, I used almond milk and it worked really well. Um, you could probably, I mean, you could use whole milk. So whatever the milk is and the butter, you know, if you don't have unsalted, use salted butter. Don't use margarine though. Butter is the thing. Butter makes the big difference here. And um, the extra egg, uh, it just, it makes it a very rich cake. So I'll have some pictures of it up on uh, my Facebook page at Mary Mac Bakehouse, Instagram, also Mary Mac Bakehouse, and on my Twitter account, uh, Mary Mac Mixes, Mary Mac Bakehouse at Mary Mac Mixes. And I'll have some pictures of the uh, finished product up and kind of as I go along. And then um, for the strawberries, strawberries, a lot of people like to uh, smash your strawberries to oblivion and uh, crush them all up and get the juice out of them. Um, what I did today just for uh, looks mainly I took uh, my strawberries and I cleaned them and then I sliced them into about eighth inch slices and I went uh, from the top to the point so it made like big circles of strawberry and then um, I had uh, two quarts of strawberries so what you want to do with your strawberries you don't have to add you really don't even have to add sugar but this time of the year strawberries are not particularly juicy so it helps to get some juice out of them and what I do is I take uh, one tablespoon per quart because you don't need a lot of sugar they're naturally sweet but that sugar that you put on will draw the juice out of them so you take your uh, strawberries have them in a bowl I prefer to use a glass bowl for strawberries um, largely because the the acid in them can react with different metals, so I just use a glass bowl with them. And I put them in there, and I sprinkled the strawberries with a um, tablespoon of sugar per quart. So I use two quarts of strawberries, two tablespoons of sugar. And then I stir that up a couple times to make sure that the sugar is distributed through the strawberries, and then I just put a lid on them and set them in the um, refrigerator and let the juice come out of them and you'll be surprised how much juice you'll get just from doing that then it, it just it makes the strawberries uh it keeps the strawberries looking good also but it just you know gives you a little bit of juice to put on your cake and then of course you have to have whipped cream on the top of that please don't use cold whip just get a can of ready whip ready whip is whipping cream just do that cool whip is i don't even know what cool whip is what is sugar-free Cool Whip? I mean, there's nothing in Cool Whip to begin with. Yeah, it's whipped it's, up. It's sugar. Nothing. So if you don't have sugar in Cool Whip, I can't even imagine what that is. Egg whites? No, there's know. no egg whites in it. There's no nothing. There's, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. It could be made from missing socks, like, like how you can never find matches to socks even for years if you keep that one sock that could be where all the missing socks are going into making sugar-free cold whip i feel like that's not it okay well i could be a little bit off on that one just a guess <laughs> but i figure if i'm going to the trouble to make something delicious i'm not putting that stuff on it okay so as you can see i'm slightly opposed to cool whip um but anyway it makes it it's it's fairly like i said the cake i mean you make the cake it's it's just a 9 by 13 cake, and you're done. Get your strawberries ready. You can make this if you're going somewhere or planning to have people over or whatever, or even just for your family. You can make it at any time. It's just set it aside, and it's all ready to go when you're ready to serve. And the nice thing about it is because you have the strawberries in a separate container and the whipped cream in a can, like... You can put however much strawberries you want on your own piece or however much whipped cream. Like, I That's don't true. like strawberries. I'm right. allergic to them. So I just put some whipped cream on my cake. She completely delicious. avoids the strawberry part of the strawberry shortcake. Yes. So she's basically just having whipped cake cream and with cake. whipped cream on it. It was delicious. Also oh, delicious, yes. So that's my little tip for today. It's It's, like I said, it's not much, you know, but it takes something that's... Um, every day and makes it into something that's really good. And speaking of which, another thing that does that is the caramel dip. 
Yes, I made this delicious caramel dip because I, I sell caramels. I have uh, Margaret's caramels that I sell and they're made fresh every time the store is open. Our store is open uh, usually once a month, sometimes twice. The first Saturday of each month, Standing Chimney is open. Uh, you can go to standingchimney.com and check us out. Um, but the first Saturday of every month, Standing Chimney is open and I always have fresh caramels, but guess what? Sometimes I have a lot of caramels left because people aren't in the mood for them that time. So I was giving them away, which is caramels are pretty expensive to make, you know, because you have your butter, your sugar, your cream, and they take a long time to cook. So they're very uh, labor intensive. I had all these caramels and I thought, geez, I hate to just give them away, even though I, you know, like the people I'm giving them away to. So... I decided to try and make a caramel dip out of them. Um, and I found a really good recipe from the people at Kraft who also make caramels. And uh, the Kraft recipe calls for one bag of caramels, which is like 11 ounces, I think, one bag of caramels to a half cup of half and half. And you just heat it slowly on the stove. <clears throat> you have to unwrap all the caramels. I should include that because I don't want somebody to just dump a bag of cellophane covered caramels into a pot that could be ugly but you unwrap the caramels you put the um, half and half into a pot with a heavy bottom nice heavy bottom so it doesn't burn and then on very low heat you just start to warm things up a little bit and as the caramels melt you stir it and then you slowly bring it up a little bit bring it to a boil and uh, I boiled it for about 10 minutes but I did I used uh, my own homemade caramels and then melted them into the half and half. And I, I uh, did just like I said, brought it up slowly as everything melted, kept stirring. It took about an, it, I probably spent about an hour on the cooking part and, um, you know, kept stirring, stirring, and it came, finally came to a boil. And stuff's really weird when it boils. It looks like lava. You know those close up movies they show you when a or, volcano or erupts? Or like a tar pit. Yeah, a tar pit would bubbling. be good too. It's it's very small bubbles, bubbly bubbly, you know. And, and it um, melted really well. So this time I made it, it's pretty, it, it actually is, uh, like if you scoop it up on an apple, which we have been doing here, if you scoop it up on an apple, it just sits there. It's really nice. So that's something easy to make that you can <laughs> I canned it I actually um, put it in half pint jars and um, I'll have it available for sale at the store of course but I canned the sauce and it works really nice as a sauce um, over ice cream you can put it over said cake that we just made uh, would be very good on that um, dipping apples in it we dipped what did we dip in it the one time I want to say that was it the pretzels that we dipped in it I, I think, think it so. was those uh, butter pretzels, yeah. And that was really good too. So it's a good thing to make. It's kind of easy. Um, if you knew you were, if you wanted to do something uh, different for a dessert, say have ice cream with caramel sauce on it, your own caramel sauce, it'd be something that you could do that would basically you know what's in it, you know. Um, and it's it's very very good. So that's something also we'll have available at the store, like I said, and we always have a sample of it so you can try before you buy. But it's also something really easy to try at home that, I mean, I say easy and I understand it's kind of daunting to do something that you've never done before, especially something like that that has the potential of turning out badly. But if you just take your time and and let the half and half heat up, let the caramels melt, don't be in a hurry about it. It doesn't, it's not, it really doesn't take that long. I think in our society we want everything to be done like, 10 minutes from now, you know, and it doesn't always work that way, but it, it's uh, rewarding, I think, to take something like that and make it and to be able to say that you did it, you know. Plus, it's not like those recipes that you use, like, you know, a can of uh, refrigerator biscuits and stuff like that to make something. You're making something like that. It's a little bit more impressive, I think. So It's, it's kind of like melting chocolate. You can throw chocolate chips in a bowl and put it in the microwave to melt them. However, if you use bars of chocolate and heat them over the stove and just slowly stir it, it turns out a lot smoother. It's not gritty. 
it takes longer, but it's a better right. And you final can temper. Product. You can temper your chocolate, which we'll do. We'll do that sometime. Uh, we'll make it. We'll, we'll we sh- could make those brownies. Uh, we could make the brownies. We could. I could show you how to make a ganache, which is not as hard as it sounds, just because it's a French word. It always. It's a fancy you it's, word. So you it think it's hard, <laughs> but it's not. It's not as hard as you would think. Um, that's another thing that's like so delicious and so simple to make that just like. That would also be good on this cake. Ooh. Ooh, now I'm thinking I should have made ganache. Well, we'll do that another day. But um, would my independent taste tester like to come and taste test the caramel dip with an apple? Independent yes, taste tester? I now it's that time in the show where the independent taste tester comes in and yeah. tastes whatever we tell her to. Here, let me scoot the microphone closer to the independent taste tester. Here. I will now pick up a slice of apple. I am, I am dipping the apple into this lovely caramel. It's got a nice... Um, it made a big, comes long up with string. a nice peak. Um, <laughs> it sits nicely on the apple uh, and has a lovely... Sheen. A sheen, a sheen. and texture. Ca- caramel color, or caramel, as some may say. I'm now going to taste... Here, let me hold the microphone up to you and get another big crunch. Mm. She's chewing now. She's chewing. Mm-hmm. If we had subtitles, it would say mm-hmm. chewing. Yeah. That's good. That's very good. And as a person who does not enjoy caramel in literally any other way, this is fabulous. And I would recommend it to everyone and i'm going to have another bite crunch right into the microphone she just double dipped in the caramel dip i should mention that on the show (laughs) so this is going to be like the family's caramel dip now or yours (laughs) (laughs) That, (laughs) that was our independent taste tester thank you very much independent taste tester would you like us to promote you on twitter at all or your check is in the mail you you want to stay anonymous our independent taste tester will stay anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed it. And thank you for listening, if you did. And if you didn't, too bad for you. <laughs>